Now let's take a look at what the rest of the world is doing with science. So CERN, this is the European Center for Nuclear Research, which I think if you say it in French, comes out in that order, okay? <laughs> CERN, this is where they have the famous Large Hadron Collider. This is like, they're, they're, crank, they're at the limits. It, it is the highest energy ever attained on Earth uh, and by the way, we would have done three times this energy had Congress not cut the funding for the superconducting super collider that would have been built in Texas. That was cut back in, ninth, in the early 90s, right around just after peace broke out in Europe, by the way. <laughs> Physicists are only really useful when we're at war, according to government funding patterns. So they're looking for the Higgs boson and, uh, and anything else that shows up on the docket as a particle that gives mass to other particles. So it's kind of cool. Some people have called it the God particle, and including physicists. What are they doing over in China? Well, they're building the largest dam in the world, the Three Gorges Dam, and they have a burgeoning aerospace industry growing at 14% a year, 13% a year. Their economy is growing at 10% a year. Do you know that in Russia, they want to actually send a mission to deflect Apophis. They actually are prepared to fund that. That picture that I drew and did my little dance, that's not funded. That's just ideas on a page. Russia actually wants to fund it. And they invited us to participate. And I said, well, sure. But then I thought about it. I was asked by the NewsHour, what are my top 10 news stories of the year? This was now end of 2000. Nine. What is my top ten? I said, I don't have ten stories. I have five. Okay, what are they? I said, one of them is Russia inviting us to join them to deflect Apophis. They said, why? I said, here's why. <laughs> why is Russia creating the spaceship that's going to deflect Apophis, which if it hits wipes out the west coast of the United States. Aren't we the ones who are supposed to fund that mission and then invite others to participate? Isn't this how it has always been before? So that was an important news story for me because that is the beginning of the end. That's where you think you're at the top and people start doing things on their own with or without you. And all of a sudden, you, not all of a sudden, you gradually fade to insignificance on the world stage. That was writing on the wall for me when we were not leading that mission. Let's keep going, how about Brazil? If I mention Brazil, what's the first thing you think of? Someone said, bikinis. bikinis. <laughs> the guys are saying, yeah, the tongue bikinis, yeah. Uh, soccer maybe, okay. This is the American view of Brazil. I understand. It's completely understandable. However, it blinds you to the fact that they have a burgeoning aerospace industry. Do you know that most planes that you fly between regional cities is made and designed in Brazil? You're not thinking this because you're still distracted by bikinis. Brazil has the third largest aerospace industry in the world, employing 18,000 people. It's a $20 billion industry there, and they invented the first airplane that can fly on alcohol. Brazil. Now, we don't do that because we just drink our alcohol. See, see, that's how that happens. We don't even think to make a plane out of it. So. Notice the American bias that prevents us from recognizing the rest of the world rising up as we stand there flat-footed. Europe. Let's take a look at pre-euro currency. I'm intrigued by this. Before the euro came out, Europe valued, you know, they still do, they value their scientists enough to put them on their currency. Check this out. So you have Tesla in the upper right, Yugoslavia. Some Tesla fans out there. We got Copernicus, and who do we have? We have Marconi down here, in, uh, who, who pioneered radio uh, communication. And 
you know, and we have uh, Saint Schuper right here, not a scientist, but an aviator. And who's the cute little character? Who's the little boy here? Who's that? Who's, this, who's that together now? The little prince, of course. Who here did not know that that's the little prince? Admit it, okay. So you guys are honest, everyone else is lying, all right? <laughs> the little prince landed on an asteroid, by the way. Uh, the name of that asteroid was called B. Anybody know the rest of the numbers? Oh, that, okay, that's a good guess. Wrong, but it's a good guess. <laughs> Two ones. <laughs> uh, actually, I forgot the numbers, but I know it's not that. Uh, I think it's B662. Whatever that number is, there's a website you can go to that is all about deflecting asteroids. And it chose the, the name of Little Prince's asteroid for its website. And so check it out. So you see this, and you can flip over the currency, and it has the iconography of that person's life. So you have some you know, amazing lightning demonstration there, uh, electrical discharge from Tesla. We've got sort of the, 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 the sun-centered solar system. There's the, the tower. We've got a biplane there, telescopes. It's all there. We keep going. Uh, hang on. So uh, here's Darwin from England. We've got one of his finches. We've got, got some Darwin fans. What's odd, they always show him with this big old sort of grandpa beard, but he did his greatest work when he was 26. So he can at least put some hair back on his head, you know. <laughs> but I figured, maybe they figured if he'd show him as 26, no one would think he did, you know. But he, it was, he was 26 when he did it. Uh, this is currency from Romania. They had a total solar eclipse go across their country. And so they figured, let's make some money out of that. So, so they, they put the path. And on the flip side, I don't know what that is, all right? It's got like an amoeba thing. I, so an artist gone a little too far, all right? But it's, it's clearly cosmically inspired art. That money, by the way, is made of polymer. It does not rip. It is the future of paper currency. Here we have Al Hassan, who figured out how sight worked. He's from 1,000 years ago in Baghdad. This is on Iraqi currency. And we got Albert here. Uh, he's adopted into um, Israeli currency. Of course, he was not Israeli, but when you're famous, everyone claims you. See, that's how that works. All of these folks are scientists. Keep going. We've got Euler and Galileo and Gauss and Faraday and, and Pasteur. And I don't know what they're doing to this dog here. I'm not even going to ask. Um, <laughs> we've got my boy Ike. And everybody's there. Let's, oh, by the way, when, if we were to ask, who in the world do we think literally and perhaps stereotypically make the best engineers in the world? Germany, of course, you think about it. It's German, it's German, German, German engineering. It's a selling point when they sell cars, German engineering, okay? German engineering. Well, so, so that's 10 Deutschmarks. Okay, on the right, that's Carl Frederick Gauss, a brilliant mathematician. Let's zoom in on that currency here. Wait a minute, what is that? Whoa, a mathematical distribution function on the money. <laughs> Whoa, okay. <laughs> Look at this. Imagine how different America would be if we had equations on our money. We might still be leading the world in something. <laughs> Actually, we do have a scientist on our money, don't we? Who's that? Ben Franklin. Here he goes. So, so he's a scientist on money. Surely there's some iconography of his contributions. Let me see. Hmm. Nope. There's not even a kite. All right? <laughs> or, or There's nothing. I don't even see a lightning rod. All right? So clearly that's not why he's on the money. He's on the money because he's a founding father, not because he was a scientist. In fact, he was one of the most famous scientists of his day in his researches in electricity. Ben Franklin.